Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hobart Base Sports Network. I am your host Justin Winter, and today it's the season opener against number 11 Clemson. They're coming to us, and we are favored to win. Washington starts off the year at number one, they're ahead of us, we're at number two. Number three is Miami, actually. Number four is the Cincinnati Bearcats. Five is UCLA. Six is Ohio State. Seven is Auburn. Eight is Florida State. Nine is Oklahoma State. Ten goes to Texas A&M. Now Clemson is number 11. We just saw that. Georgia is 12. Stanford is number 13. Arkansas number 14. Syracuse number 15. Texas number 16. Boise State number 17. Michigan State number 18. Arizona number 19, LSU 20, Michigan 21, Georgia Tech 22, Colorado is number 23, Wyoming is number 24, and Washington State is number 25. A lot more West Coast teams than I thought I would see. I mean, I know the Pac-12 is doing great, but wow. And Tyree Nolan is obviously the Heisman favorite. Don't know why he came back for another year, but he did. Aside from that, you have mostly quarterbacks except for Ephatha Decapolis from Virginia. And everyone else is actually running backs. Tyree Nolan, obviously, first team All American. Jojo McIntosh as well. Why, why wouldn't they be? They were last year. They will be this year. Saw Sage, preseason, first team All American because he's a legend. Surprisingly, no one else on our line. That, that does come as a shock. Ah, there we go. Dane Burns as a junior free safety. I almost said strong safety. And that's going to be it, actually, for our first team All-Americans. For second team All-Americans, we have... Looking. So, aha! Jacoby Jackson is a second team All-American in his senior year. Free season, of course. None of these are final end of season stuff because it's the beginning of the season. Yes, the floor is made of floor. And yep, Clemson, they're not as talented as us, but never overlook anyone. They could do something. They're led by Warren Harris, who's got no starting stats whatsoever. This is his first game as a starter, but he's a solid player. We had him at our school, but he transferred away for playing time. Let's see if he comes back with a vengeance. Welcome to Hobart Bay, Alaska. This year we are not starting the year in a neutral site game. We've done that the last couple of years. This year we're just starting in our home stadium. We have the Clemson Tigers coming to town. And uh, there's some pageantry that we want to do, but we're skipping to the coin toss. That's the pageantry we have here in Hobart Bay. Clemson loses. No, they win the coin toss. I'm a moron. And they choose to kick the ball to start off. Not a surprise. So here we go. A new season awakens, and we have kickoff in Hobart Bay, Alaska. Number two versus number 11 to start, and McIntosh takes it out. He decided to come back for his senior year, and it starts with a 20-some-odd yard kick return. And, of course, our annual first game of the year, technology struggles have returned. Tyree Nolan gets the first carry, and he picks up a first down and then some. We have no idea what the exact number will be. Well, we have some idea, but we won't know for sure because the technology sucks. Glessner now rolls out in his first start ever, and he finds Joseph Jacobson on his first pass as a starter. Good play for him to start. Here we go. It's a read option now. We know he's got wheels, and he picks up eight yards on that one. He takes the number of three, the only... One to claim that number since Zach East wore it. Zach East, of course, was a legend. And this is a catch for Ken Anderson, who's finally moving up the depth chart since others have gone ahead. Now, Brett Stone, the backup, is in. His first play is a handoff to Tyree Nolan, who has good blocking, and he picks up seven. I'm glad to see these new faces. Now, split backfield. We love to do the split backfield. Hand off to Tyree Nolan, cuts outside, and he takes a huge hit, but he picks up the first down, and that is what is important. Second down and goal now. Brett Stone is in the game again. He's looking for a passing touchdown. He gets Nolan short, and he's stuffed. 
Oh, they stopped him good right there at the end, and now Glessner is back in. Play call is a handoff to Nolan, and he gets in like he should have last time. Hope our face strikes first. Their very first drive, a long one. Five minutes and two seconds on this drive. The opening drive of the year. Clemson now comes out with Warren Harris, the former Hobart Bay one, who got basically no playing time. His first pass is a completion to Roberts, and Clemson comes out swinging. They're here to make sure that we know that they are here. That felt like a roundabout way of saying things. Warren Harris now trying to throw again. He's going to run instead, and he should have known better. That is a sack. Nope, sorry man, you are not getting out of that one. Third down and 14 now for the Clemson Tigers. Can they get the first down? That's a short throw to Roberts and that's not going anywhere. Hobart Bay gets the ball back after one defensive possession. Glessner now does the screen to Nolan. He's got blockers ahead of him and I, I'm not sure what he tried to do on that move. It, it didn't work. But he's still got the first down. First down and 10 for Hobart Bay. Glessner hands off to Nolan. He hits the outside. Kind of... I don't know how you would describe that. Not really as swervy as normal. Second down and four now for Hobart Bay. It's a play action. Glessner rolling out. There is pressure. Lobs it. And it's intercepted by Larson. He must have missed the Strupinski training day when they told him not to throw interceptions because we already have another one. 21 seconds left in the first quarter. What will Warren Harris do with it? He keeps on this one and he breaks a tackle. Now he has all the room in the world. There goes Warren Harris and he is gone. Touchdown Clemson. He says you're not going into the end of the first quarter without me making my mark. I will make you hurt. Well, he's definitely making his case for why he should be the starter at Clemson. A great run, and now here comes what is likely the last play of the quarter. Glessner will find Joseph Jacobson, and he gets pummeled. But that will end it. And that ends the first quarter. We are tied after a quarter of play, 7-7. Seven to seven. All right, second quarter now starting with a first down and 10 for Obart Bay. Five wide, we're looking to throw it deep. Glessner takes the sack. That's another thing he must have missed when he attended the Strupinski crash course, is the advice not to get sacked. However, on third down and 20, we can always make it up, or we can get sacked again. A loss of another seven, and Clemson is... <laughs> Definitely getting the ball after this one. All right, so the Tigers have a good defensive stop. Let's see what they do with their next offensive possession. Warren Harris hands off to Washington, and he will fight for a solid nine-yard gain. Man named Washington goes to school in South Carolina. All right, Warren Harris. Now, he could run with it. He throws to avoid McGee. It's caught by McKenzie, and he has a touchdown for Clemson. Time allowed the receivers to make something happen, and McKenzie says, hey, I'll get open, and I'll make it work. Look at this. All right, so he's going across the middle. He has his man there. They go to the sideline, and then he cuts up, and he just has a step on him. After that, he gets a block, and he's gone. That is a solid play by Clemson, and now they lead by a touchdown. How will Hobart Bay respond after a false start as well? First down and 15, Glessner will throw, and he finds McIntosh who gets past the defender, and he's going to outrun them all. In one play, Hobart Bay ties the game. Technically, they bring it within one point, but we're not missing the extra point. That just doesn't happen with us. McIntosh caught that one, and the defender tried to jump the route. He tried to go for the pick, and that backfired spectacularly. And after that, it's all Macintosh. You're not catching up to him. Not unless you yourself have track star speed. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Sorry, except I'm not. 14-14 now, tie game. Here we go. Now, play action from Warren Harris. What will he do? He will run with it. He's going to pick up some yardage, specifically eight yards. Clemson 
is a hurry up offense. That's probably the only thing that's different from more for Warren Harris here. And they give him the first down on that one. Interesting, interesting uh, judgment by the refs. Play action now for Harris. He's rolling out and off his back foot he finds Roberts. Come on. I think it's more of these receivers. These receivers are bailing him out a little bit. Third down and seven now. They're trying to screen play to newbie. He has a blocker. He outruns him. Breaks a tackle and fights ahead to the 15-yard line. What a start for Clemson. First down and 10 at the 15. It's another... Oh, no, it's a run this time. And newbie picks up a solid seven yards. I'm so used to them doing play actions that I thought it was a play action. But no, it was a run. And now here's another run for newbie. He has the edge, sort of. He gets tackled after he gets the first down. It's now second down and goal. Approximately seven, eight yards to go. It's another handoff and Washington gets swarmed. The line could not contain the immense pressure that Obar Bay set. Third down and goal now. With two and a half left in the half. Harris to the left and it's incomplete. Ooh, that's uh, that's probably some bad advice he got from the, the offensive coordinator. Now third down and ten. Clemson did add a field goal. Glessner, he doesn't get the ball out. Clemson's going to get the ball back. The chance to increase their lead. Two minutes and 12 seconds left specifically. And it's a handoff to start to Washington. And he did not break the tackle. He fell backwards and to his side. I don't know how it's possible to do that. Now a third down and eight. It's a handoff to him again on the draw, and he does not get the first down. Sorry, draws are rarely effective in that way, but they are going for it. On fourth down and one, a minute and a half left in the quarter. Handoff to Washington. He breaks the tackle, and he has plenty. There is no doubt he got that first down. Second down and five now. What's Clemson's play call? It's another throw. Go figure. Harris lobs it deep, and that one is intercepted by Cedric Allen. I believe he's a senior. That will give Hobart Bay the ball back with a minute left about on the clock. And what else would we do except to send everyone deep? Glessner rolling out. He didn't quite get sacked. He launches it deep. That one is caught by JoJo McIntosh. They left him all alone, and he's gone again. Touchdown, Hobart Bay. And in one play, Hobart Bay has taken the lead. Clemson had a chance to increase their lead to potentially 10 points, and Glessner just goes and says, nope, we'll take that. I believe that was an 87-yard touchdown pass. I think that's the longest in Hobart Bay history. And if we had a graphic, it would probably say the longest in NCAA history, but that's just not right. That will end the first half. Hobart Bay leads in a fun one, 21-17. Kudos to Clemson for coming out and giving us some good competition. This is what I expect out of the number 11 team in the nation. Warren Harris has said, hey, I know these guys, and I know that we can beat them. Well, they got within four, and if not for a couple really bad gaffes in coverage, they'd be up by 10 points right now. Of course, UCLA was also up 17-7 against us in the conference championship last year, and our defense just shut them down in the second half. Will it be the same for Clemson this this time here? I say this time. The last time they faced us, it was Zafir Strupinski's freshman year. That is a catch by Russell, and he picks up a first down out around midfield. And that last time we faced Clemson, they slaughtered us. It, it was not pretty. Hand off to Washington, and his he picks up the first down. Clemson saying, nope, nope, nope. Our offense will be good. Third down and six, Warren Harris gets Dixon amidst that crowd he fits it in there good play good throw and good catch now a handoff to Newby who sort of has blocks he well, no longer sort of he just does and he gets the first down all right Clemson driving can they cap it off Newby will get another first down Goal to go for Clemson on their first drive of the second half. Let's see if they can make it end with six points. 
Warren Harris takes the sack. Oh, that's not how you make it end with six points. That's how you set yourself up for a field goal. Second down and goal now. Two tight ends to the left. They hand it off and he goes right instead as he breaks a tackle. Washington, can he get there? Not quite. Two and a half yards away. A fantastic run. Same formation though. Third down and goal. Hand off again to Washington. He went towards the pile and he doesn't get to the end zone. If he'd gone right, he may have gotten it. And Clemson settles for the field goal. That is three points added for the Tigers, and it is a one-point game. Now with two receivers to the right, it's a counter to Nolan, and he gets tackled from behind. Yeah, there's not much you can do when uh when they tackle you and your line doesn't block for you. Third down and 13, Glessner throws to the right. That's caught somehow by McIntosh, and they gave him the first. I did not think that they would give him the first there. Maybe our inches short curse has ended. It's a keeper for Glessner on this one, and he will pick up nine yards. I honestly thought he'd get tackled after about six. Good play for him. Split backfield now. Yeah, it's a handoff to Tyree Nolan as he gets another block. Can he outrun him? Yes, he can. Tyree Nolan fights inside the 10. A great run, great blocking, and great vision by Tyree Nolan. Now second down and goal, Hobart Bay trying to extend the lead. That's caught by Bentley Zwiebel. I think it's Zwiebel. The freshman, the red shirt freshman comes in and gets his very first score. Number 80 is what he dons. And we have two first, well, Glessner's a starter. Zwiebel, I don't know if he's a starter per se, but he's got a lot of talent and I'm confident he will be a difference maker in the future. Now 28 to 20, what's, oh, was that a direct snap to Washington? It failed miserably, but I don't think I've ever seen a direct snap where the quarterback was in the backfield. Wow. All right, well, we have a punt return upcoming. This is Jojo McIntosh, and he is a magical man. And by magical, I mean he has the speed to make everyone miss. Now he's got... Oh my goodness, Jojo McIntosh saying, this is my senior year, I'm going to make it count. 31 seconds left here in the third quarter. It's a handoff to him, to Tyree Nolan now. As he gets the first down, apparently. I could have sworn they'd call him inches short. First down and 10. Extra tight end in there. Hand off Nolan. He will pick up a solid gain. That's eight yards. And that will end the third quarter. Hobart Bay in striking position. They're up by eight points. All right, let's see if we can cap this one off with a touchdown. Second down and two. And it's a play action for Brett Stone, and he gets Joda Joannin on the sideline for a first down and goal. Now less than seven minutes. Here we go. Triple option. It's a handoff to John Gordon, and he scores! Another freshman getting his first touchdown. The only one who hasn't, it seems, is Brett Stone, funny enough. It was a triple option. It was a handoff to him. That's, that was the right read, and... Line blocked well, so second down and six now for Clemson. As Warren Harris is trying to desperately get his team back in it. He's going to run for a first down here, and he gets taken down. Looked like maybe we were trying to strip the ball a little bit. Did not work. Second down and five. Tigers do... Oh, that was a disaster. I think they were trying to do a play action, and uh, they just ran into each other. Third down and 11 now. They have a different quarterback in there. That's Schneider hands off to Washington. And Washington cannot get the first down. So Clemson, what is their... They punt. So now we have Brett Stone in. I'm going to give him another shot. Play action. Maybe he'll get a massive play in for a touchdown. Maybe not. He will not throw the ball away in time. That is a freshman mistake. Now third down and 16. We got Glessner in there. Gonna have a miracle play here, and that one is a miracle play to McIntosh. Wow! They left him all alone again. Only reason he didn't score another touchdown was because they happened to have a defender in the area. 
Hand off to Nolan this time. He's going to continue to try and drain this clock. Clemson, I don't like your chances. Not one bit. Third down and two. We get this first down and they'll have to start using timeouts. Hand off to Nolan. First down. They're going to have to start using timeouts. But there's the first one. Clemson needs a miracle to win this one. Third down and four for Hobart Bay. It's a keeper for Brett Stone. And in his first game, not even as a starter in his very first game, as a backup, he gets the game ceiling play. That ends it. 35 to 20 is your final on this one as we see the stadium because normally there's a graphic here showing stats and our technology is not working today. Great game guys. A fantastic game. Jojo McIntosh apparently gets player of the game. Can't say I blame them for giving it to him. He had a couple of huge receptions. He just went all the way. And a good showing I would say by our freshman offensive players. Actually, everyone here is getting their very first playing time. I mean, Glessner, he did play before, but not substantially. This this time, he was, he had a very good game. I liked it. I like what I'm seeing. Receiver Bentley Zwiebel, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He had a very good play. You know, he got the touchdown catch on the slants. Of course, that was probably his only catch of the game, but still, he made the play happen. Jojo McIntosh helped supplement that with massive touchdown catches. And John Gordon had the help of a good O-line to get that touchdown on the triple option. I'm liking what I'm seeing. And considering that this was against number 11, I know we've blown out teams who are ranked much higher than that. But I think that Clemson is a pretty good team this year. And this honestly is how these games should go. Maybe not the dominance that we're used to, but you know what? It was a great game, and I think we have another shot at making a run into the playoff. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we got to focus on today and today's stats. We can go over them soon in the postgame show. All right, Glessner went 9 for 15, almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, and one pick. Took three sacks. Brett Stone went a perfect 5 for 5, 17 yards though. So not much production, no touchdowns and no picks. Uh, on the ground, Tyree Nolan continuing his dominance, 116 yards, a touchdown. John Gordon got a touchdown on his only carry of the game. Good job, guys. Through the air, Jojo McIntosh, 214 yards and two touchdowns. Joseph Jacobson got some stuff. It was really the McIntosh show. But Bentley there, he got in and made a good play. He got himself a touchdown. On the defensive side, it was Oscar McGee who's taking the reins now that Doug Glover is gone. Seven solo tackles, one assisted. None for loss. However, Sausage got three tackles for loss. One of those was a sack, and then the pick came by way of Cedric Allen, so he is a senior. Good. Now I don't look totally like a moron. Partially, but not totally. Sidney Larson on Clemson, seven tackles, all solo. One tackle for loss. Obvious, well, no sacks. A pick. He got one of their picks. It was the only pick, actually. Through the air, 60 yards for Brad Roberts, the tight end. 47 for Derek McKenzie, and the touchdown. It was that one good play that he made. And solid, sort of solid performances for the rest of the guys, sort of not. On the ground, they had a good game. I mean, 76 yards for Warren Harris and a touchdown. That was helped by the 66-yarder. And then 68 yards for Garrett Washington, and 30 for Larry Newby. All around, it was a pretty decent day. And through the air, Warren Harris, great game, 17 for 20, 212 yards, one touchdown, one pick which wasn't very good, but I see a promising future for him in Clemson. I think he'll do well. And they actually beat us in several categories, but you know what? We beat them in points, and that's what matters in the end. Our next game will be on the road against the Baylor Bears. So, I hope to see you there, but until then, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and have a nice day.